everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nicole with Our Children, Our Future, and this is Family Matters. Today we are talking about something that will probably have you scratching in no time. And that's right, we're talking about head lice. Uh, so it's back to school season and uh, daycares are going to be in full tilt as well. So this is a great time for head lice to spread from children to children. So today we're going to be talking about some really cool facts and what you need to know um, to get rid of the head lice and to hopefully keep it from coming back. So what are head lice? Uh, head lice are tiny insects that live on your scalp. They lay eggs on your hair shafts um, and it is not a disease. They are just considered more of a nuisance than anything. Um, and it doesn't spread like a disease. So there are three different stages of head lice. You have your nits, which are the eggs. They are white or gray looking. Sometimes they can be tan or yellow. And they're about the size of a grain of sand. They are extremely tiny and they're very sticky. They will stick to the hair. Uh, you won't be able to brush them off. They will be stuck there. And you will actually have to really pinch and pull to get them off of the hair strand. Usually you will find these about, um, you know, four centimeters or so from the scalp because they need the heat of the scalp in order to be able to hatch. Uh, then you have nymphs. Nymphs are baby lice. Um, they look similar to what the adult uh, louse would look like, however, just much smaller. And over a course of, I believe it is 10 days, uh, they begin to grow into adult louse. I should also mention that eggs take approximately nine to 10 days to hatch. So <clears throat> if you do find that you have uh, nits in your hair, but you do not see any active lice, uh, you are going to want to do a treatment after nine days. <laughs> the last type is the adult lice or louse. Um, they can be extremely hard to see because they're about the size of a sesame seed. They can live up to 30 days on a person's head and will die within two days of not having a host. So they do feed on um, the blood from the scalp and they will inject some of their saliva in at the same time, which is why our scalp gets irritated and itchy. Um, so obviously they can live on your scalp for a long time. Really cool fact though, is that you can actually have lice and not have an itchy scalp and you might not even know that you are carrying lice until it becomes very apparent. So here's a really cool thing is that lice are not picky. They love super clean hair. They love dirty hair. They love any type of hair. Um, oftentimes it was thought way back in the day that if you had lice, you were a dirty person. You didn't clean, you didn't bathe. That is completely not true. Um, actually it's easier for them to cling on to clean hair um, and hair that is down, right? So how do they spread? So they do not fly, they do not jump, they can't hop, they literally crawl, but they are very quick. So you need to be in close contact with another person's head, hair, or um, an object like a hat or comb, um, headphones, any of that kind of stuff where they might have gotten off and then someone else has put them on that it would transmit over. So here is something that I actually didn't know until I did some research is that lice cannot live, head lice specifically, that we get as humans cannot be on your pets. They will not survive on your pets um, and if your pet gets fleas that is different than head lice. As I mentioned earlier, it is possible to get head lice without any symptoms or signs. The biggest symptom or sign uh, that you might see is a really itchy head. Um, if you notice your child is scratching, take time, take a good light, a really comb through their hair, checking in behind their ears and along the back of their neck, their temples. Those are the hot spots for a lot of lice um, and really comb through section by section looking very closely because again they are very tiny. 
So what is the best way to check for head lice? So as I mentioned, have them sit somewhere that is not carpeted. Um, you can put a towel over their shoulders so you can see if anything falls down, preferably a white towel or a light colored one. Have some really good lighting if you can go outside under a nice bright sun or under a light. Uh, sometimes a magnifying glass is helpful as well and you are literally going to just take very tiny sections and part the hair and comb through and look very quickly. Uh, again, starting at the scalp and the bottom of the neck, behind the ears and around the temples. Um, you might just see movement and you might think, oh, did I see something? You may have. They are very, very quick. Uh, and they don't like bright lights. So um, if you think you see something, you know, keep continuing to check uh, and you will probably find something. <laughs> it is important to continue to can check regularly um, if you did find lice or nits because you, if you may have missed something and or the nits may have hatched. So how do we treat head lice? This is a big one. So they do recommend not treating your head unless you find a live head lice in the hair just because the products are pretty harsh and they can be irritating to the scalp for children. So here are some important things. There's lots of different um, uh, products out there on the market. A lot of them are behind the counter at the pharmacy. You just ask for them. Uh, there are natural methods as well. However, please note that these are not proven and uh, a lot of times are not very effective. Things like covering their head in Vaseline or mayonnaise or oil, it's not, it has not proven to be effective at all um, and can just prolong your problem. It is better to treat the lice with the product that is recommended um, and follow the directions on the box. With that being said, a lot of times you either, um, depending on the directions of the box, you would wash their hair or dampen their hair. You would add the product to their scalp and let it sit for however long the box tells you. Um, and then you would wash or rinse out the product, again, depending on the, the box. After this, you would comb through with the special lice comb that is in the box taking special care to wipe the comb um, every every pass through and to uh, wash it if need be um, to make sure that you're not retransmitting any eggs or bugs back into the hair. If you still see live lice on the head after you've done a treatment, this means that you you probably did not leave the treatment on long enough or did not use enough of the product or get it all over the scalp. You would probably have to repeat the process. The goal is that there should be no live lice at the end of your treatment. Uh, you might still see nits, which are the eggs, and this is okay because a lot of products don't actually kill the eggs. So you will have to do a recheck and apply, reapply the product uh, in the five to nine days, whatever it recommends on the box. The next big thing is to disinfect the house. So again, don't panic. These don't carry disease. These, you know, are not going to pass anything on to make you ill. Um, however, they can be a nuisance. So you need to bag up or wash anything that is material that your child may have been in contact with uh, up to 48 hours prior to you discovering the lice, the live lice. This includes things like bedding, um, pillowcases, uh, coats, clothes, towels, anything that they may have come into contact with in the past 48 hours, hats, all of that, uh, need to either be fully washed with hot water uh, and hot dry or um, for sorry, a hot dryer for at least 15 minutes, um, or to store items in a airtight plastic bag for up to two weeks. Um, it is kind of a controversial one if you look at the different um, stuff out there because head lice can only live up to two days without a host. People question as to why two weeks, um, and I will tell you, if you have an infestation in your house, you will be happy to pack up all those stuffies for two weeks if that guaranteed there would be no further infestation. <laughs> so it is tough. It is a lot of work. Um, however, you want to make sure you try to get it all the first time so that you don't have reinfestations. 
So a big question that parents, I'm sure, are wondering is, should my child stay home if they have head lice from school or childcare? So again, each school or childcare center has their own policies and procedures around how to handle head lice. You would have to speak to them directly. However, um, the health unit, the public subway, subway district, nope, public health subway and districts, um, has made it so that they do not recommend children have to stay home if they have head lice, especially if you have treated the child and there are no live lice on their heads. Now again, each school or school board or daycare has their own policy and they will direct you um, into what the next steps are. So how do you prevent head lice? So the best way to prevent head lice is to try and teach your child to avoid head-to-head -head contact, um, not to share combs, hairbrushes, toques, hats, hair accessories, any of that stuff. It can be really tricky um, with children because they are such in close contact with each other. And you know what, sometimes it just happens that children are playing next to one another and if they are happen to be leaning in or looking at something together and they're they're touching it could happen then it could be very quickly um, and sometimes it can be tricky to pinpoint you know who or where it originated from uh, and to make sure that things are caught however uh, if you stay on top of your child and check their head regularly during the head lice season everything should go fairly well Best of luck to everyone. I hope that didn't make everyone too itchy and I put my resources um, in the description of this video. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out or drop us a comment below on how you managed to get rid of head lice in your household.